please come on.
Praise the Lord, everyone. How's everybody this morning? Truly, indeed, God is good. Just giving praise and thanks to God for allowing us to be here this morning. Amen. I know some of them behind me been picking on me, trying to ask me how old I was today. But I am celebrating my 25th anniversary of my 25th birthday. So I'll let y'all figure that out. But, but truly, indeed, God has been good. So I will accept all cash, stocks, and 2019 Ford F-150 truck accessories. And my cash app is posted on Facebook, so you can hook a brother up. But truly, indeed, God has been good to us all. I know I have a reason, another reason to give God praise, but I know all of us had a reason to give God praise as he allowed us to wake to see another day. And so for that, we need to say thank you. But truly, indeed, God has been good and thanking and praising God. He has blessed and looked over our communities, looked over our families. And let us just give him praise and thanks for it all. And so this morning, actually, I want to stand for our scripture reading. Our scripture reading this morning be coming from Psalm 66, verses 1 through 4. Psalm 66, verses 1 through 4. And just, uh, here, get it posted there. But as we read the scripture, it says, Make a joyful noise unto God, all ye lands. Sing forth the honor of his name. Make his praise glorious. Sing unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works. Through the greatness of thy power shall thine enemies submit themselves unto thee. All the earth shall worship thee and, sing, and, and, and shall sing unto thee. They shall sing to thy name, Salah. I read unto you Psalm 66, verses 1 through 4. Let us pray. Most gracious and heavenly fathers, we stand before you this morning, Father God. We just give you thanks and praise, O oh Father, for your mercy and for your grace. Heavenly Father, we thank you, O oh God, for another day that you allowed and blessed us to rise and see. And Father God, standing here upon this day, O oh Heavenly Father, we just want to lift up our voices, lift up our hands, O oh Heavenly Father, and give you praise. And God, thank you, O oh Father, for how you continually watched over us and brought us through the years. God, we thank and praise you, O oh Heavenly Father, for our life, health, and strength. Thank you for our family. God, thank you for our communities, O oh Heavenly Father, and how you have continually protected us. God, we just praise and thank you, O oh God, for, for our nation, God, and we praise you, God, for what you're doing, God, in, in the minds of our leaders, O oh Heavenly Father. God, maybe some things we haven't seen come to pass or fruition yet, but Father God, we know, O oh God, as we serve and trust in you, God, that you shall see it come to pass. And Father God, we just ask, O oh God, you look down upon those that are not saved. Look down upon those that are sick and shed in, O oh Heavenly Father. Bless them, God, with the healing. And God, for those that are not saved, O oh Heavenly Father, just give them a chance, God, that they can come to know you and be in a right relationship with you, O Heavenly Father, as their Savior. Father God, we just thank you for it all, God, and we thank you for our pastor, our first lady. And God, we just continually ask, so God, you continually do a work here at St. Paul. God, that we can be the church, that God, that represents you, O Heavenly Father, and, and that it can be of service to our community. God, we just lift you up now and, and thank you for it all. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now be in the hands of our praise and worship. Every heart say amen. Come on, say amen again. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise like you never have before. Amen. We hadn't rehearsed this, but I know the musician, he can catch me. Old song said, Down through the years, the Lord has been good to me. I know Good to me. 
but you should come to be a participant. Yes, yes, Amen. Yes. Some of us have more energy at the ball game than it does when we come to worshiping God. Amen. Maybe I'm going to have to start getting up here saying give me a J, give me an E, give me an S, give me another S, and maybe some of us will we we'll get into worship, which means when we come to worship, we so occupied when we get to worship. Yeah. We'll not tune in on God when we get here. We still got our mind on other stuff. And it's sad that we show up in the sanctuary, but other stuff still take precedence over why we're here. Yeah. Yeah. But I come this morning to worship God yeah. because I need a word from the Lord. Yeah. I need something that's going to help me to get through what I'm going through. I, Hey man, I did a personal invitation inviting the members to church because some of our members have not been to church in over a year, going on two years. And it's not pandemic driven that they're not here. I'm just gonna say it, they don't care. They don't care. They don't care. I'm just gonna say it. From the, y'all know I just say what I feel. They do not care about this church. 
Amen. They have not paid one dime to this church since we have been under this pandemic because they wasn't paying dime before. Amen. I know we lie, but y'all know who I am. I say what I feel. Amen. And so, therefore, you know, they get angry at me, Brother George, when they love one die, and I say, it's a fee for me to do the funeral. Amen. It's a fee for me to show up to do the funeral because you have not been supportive of this church, so that puts you in the inactive status. Amen. And it's sad. And, and, and we pay, and I'm not saying you have to pay to be a member here. But you pay everywhere else. And then folks say they don't want to go to church. And these the same folk, every time you turn around, they at the restaurant. And every time you turn around, they at walk. They everywhere. But then you give them an invitation. Well, I don't know if it's safe. It's most, you don't know if it's safe. <laughs> come on, no, you just don't want to come to church. That's, that's what it is. That's what it is. You don't want to come to church. Amen. Amen. So don't be worried me. Amen. I'm just don't start worrying me when you but don't worry me. I'm just gonna put it out there like that. Don't worry me. Come on, give God a hand clap praise. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank, thank you, you Lord. We getting ready for the word. Tell him thank, thank you, you Lord. Come on, let me tell him thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. I want to tell. Give you strength. Tell the Lord thank. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Tell the Lord thank you. Yeah. For everything you've done in my life, Lord. Lord, I want to tell you thank you, yeah. I want to tell you thank you. Sometimes I tell him, Lord, you made a way for me. Who in here is not enough to say he made a way for you?
I just want to tell him thank you. God always give you what you need. He give you strength and what you need. Because I'm going to just be honest with you. My voice wasn't strong because I preached hard this morning in Tupelo. But God give you what you need. You couldn't tell it, could you? Because God will supply your need. God always shows me, Sister Paco, you preach stuff to folk, but every now and then I have to show you what you're preaching is real. Amen. And God will supply every need. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. I'm going to look at this this morning. Chapter 10, verse 11 and 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11 and 12. Thank the praise team this morning. Amen. And he said, Pastor, you're going to have to leave this morning. I said, Lord, I'm watching my voice. My voice don't feel like singing this morning. But God will give you what you need. I'm a living witness. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11. Notice here in 1 Corinthians, this is Paul's first letter to the church at Corinth. And when Paul writes to the church at Corinth, he has to deal with a lot of instruction to the church. In his second letter, he defends his apostleship. In the first letter, he writes it for correction. And this is what he writes to them. He says, now all these things happen unto them for in samples. That word in samples is translated example. And they were written for admonition. That word admonition translates into instruction. Upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. Let me read this translation. It says, These things happen to them as examples. And they were written for our instruction. On whom the ends of the ages have come. So whoever think he stands must be careful not to fall. There are two words in this text that I want to pull out of there. That is examples and instructions. I want to talk this morning from the subject when God teaches you a lesson. When God teaches you a lesson. When God teaches you a lesson. Amen. Grass gonna wither one day, and the flower gonna fade. But the word of our God is gonna stand forever. When God teaches you a lesson, this morning, my brothers and sisters, I discovered that life itself is a lesson to be learned. And I've also discovered that God will use life in order to teach you a lesson. In other words, it reminds me of what my grandmother used to say. She said, son, there are some lessons in life that can only be learned by living. In other words, yes, you can learn by trial and error. But the problem with learning with trial and error is that some errors you can never recover from. Yes, you can learn by simply going through the school of hard knocks, but the danger in that method is that sometimes the school of hard knocks can knock you out permanently. In other words, I don't know about you, but, but, but I'd rather for God to teach me a lesson than having the devil to teach me a lesson. Because it was the French philosopher and atheist Valachia who said that God made man, but because man did not act the way that God wanted to do things, man turned around and made himself their own God. In other words, I would not bring this matter up, but who or what today is your God? Because, I mean, do you have some personal psychic or do you have a personal savior? Who's your God? Do you trust the sign of your zodiac or do you trust the sign of the cross? Priest Reverend maybe who is your God? Do you put your trust in your almighty dollar or do you put your trust in your almighty God? Who is your God? Because if I got to learn a lesson, I would rather have God to teach me rather than have the devil to teach me. So every now and then, it is my prayer, I say to God, God, Lord, I need you to teach me. 
because I need you to teach me how to deal with life when my own misfortunes have become barricaded. I need you to help me deal with life when my sins in my life have matriculated. How do I deal with life when my own fault, my own morals have depreciated? How do I deal with life when the evils of this world that I have participated? In other words, there's somebody here this morning that understands what I'm saying when I say that sometime in life, God had to teach you a lesson. So here it is, the Apostle Paul. He, he looks here, he's disturbed by the flow of the discourse. Because when Paul looks at the church of Corinth, when Paul looks at the Christians, he wants them to understand that yes, it looked like you got it going on. He wants them to understand that yes, it looked like you're going to stay on the top and never have to fall to the bottom. He wants them to understand that yes, it looked like you're going to always be the head and you're never going to be the tail. But Paul said that there are some things that are going on in your life. There are some things that you're allowing to happen in your life. And these things are not pleasing to God. And sometimes God had to teach you a lesson. But notice here in this passage, God gives us two clear-cut ways to learn life's lesson. The first way that we're going to learn life lesson is by example. Somebody say example. Come out and say examples. No, notice in the text, Paul says that these things happen to them as examples for us. Sometimes in life, you know, especially in this school, sometimes you tell those children, you know, I'm going to have to make an example out of you. <laughs> Come on, help me here. Uh, my grandmother said it like this. She said, you don't believe uh, fat meat grease. <laughs> and, and all she was saying, uh, uh, did, uh, uh, little sister Meadows, is that I'm going to have to make an example out of you. And I discovered that one of the best ways to learn is by example. Now, now let me pause parenthetically and tell about five of y'all in here. Either God will give you an example or God will make an example out of you. Now, y'all going to help me here. And I don't know about you, but I would rather for God to give me an example than to have God make me out of an example. Y'all ain't going to help me pray this morning. And sometimes in life, I form of my faith. But God, please make an example out of me. Sometimes I have mishandled my meaningful mandates. But God, please don't make an example out of me. Sometimes I start doing what God told me to do, and then I stop doing it. But I still tell God, please don't not make an example out of me. And somebody here right now, you, you, you better look at this text and agree with God that there is enough examples in the Bible already so God don't have to use you for an example. Are y'all gonna help me here? Listen, let me say this again, cause some of y'all ain't catching this right here. Either God will give you an example, or God will take you, and God will make an example out of you. That's why you better commit today to reading your Bible so you can learn what to do, and you can learn what not to do. Because you do know there are some examples in the Bible. See, see, what the people experience in the Bible will help us to take it, but also it's going to help us to make it. Because in this life, we learn from their example. Because in the Bible, people experience hard times and people experience good times. People had to deal with sickness. People had to deal with holiness. People had to deal with hurt. People had to deal with healing. People had to deal with demise. People had to deal with deliverance. People had to deal with retribution. People had to deal with restoration. People had to deal with problems. People had to deal with prosperity. Because in the Bible, people experience been throughs and some of them experience breakthroughs. You can be made the example. And you ought to thank God that God gives us some biblical examples so that we don't have to be made the example. Because Paul said in verse 10, y'all ain't hearing this anymore. For example, Sometimes bad things happen to good people. And the reason God allowed them to happen to good people 
is because God is trying to use them for an example. Okay, let me show you what I'm talking about. Uh, Joseph was a good man. But he went to prison. David, uh, Daniel was a good man. But he had to go to the lion's den. Joseph was a good man. But he had to have his bout with the devil. Moses was a good man. But he had to have his session and season with Pharaoh. Paul was a good man. But yet Paul still had a date with the execution. And you do know that Jesus was a good man. But he had his date with the cross on Mount Calvary. Bad things happen to good people. And you can be made an example. God will give you an example. And he makes it plain that sometimes God allows things to happen in our lives. Sometimes God allows us to go through seasons in our lives. Because God wants to use us for an example. Okay. But not only has God left us with some examples. The text says he left us also with some instructions. Some instructions. What, 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 why, why do you need some instructions? Because he wants us to understand. He wants us to know how to successfully navigate through this thing called life. Yeah, yeah. Y'all hear me here? Yes, sir. Pastor Paul says right here in the text, he said, they were written down for our instructions and our warning. He said, for we live at a time when the end is about to come. But we won't listen to no, we won't learn from the example that we showed up ain't gonna listen to no instruction. Amen. It's just like, it, it, many, many of us are just like some people I know. You go buy something at the store now and they got in there what's called instructions. Come on, help me here. And I love to put stuff together and I'm gonna tell you something, I don't care how much you think you know now, you're going to need them instructions. That's right. That's right. Because you're going to look at the picture and you say, well, I know how to put it together because I've been putting these together. <laughs> then by you get through, you got 10 screws left over here. Come on, help me here. You got about three or four washers left. Yeah. And then you get the table up, it's just rocking and reeling and rocking and reeling. Why? Because you did not follow the instruction. Right. It's sad to say, but sometimes that's why some of our lives yes, are rocking and reeling. That's why some of our lives seem to be falling apart. That's why some of our lives are not stable simply because we have not followed the instruction. God has left us some instruction. How? Because he wants us to know how to navigate through our circumstances. How to maneuver through this mean and cruel world before the end comes. What the instruction, Pastor? He put them in a book called the Bible. Basic instructions before leaving this earth. The word is, is, listen, the word is a spiritual antidote for this sin-infected world. In other words, we got to understand that God's word is more than an, a great, uh, listen, a few good stories. God's word is more than a host of holy suggestions. It's more than 66 books. It's more than 189 chapters. It's more than 31,101 verses. It's more than 3,566,480 letters. It's more than 1,260 promises. It's more than 6,468 commands. It's more than 3,294 questions. It's more than that. Tell somebody it's more than that. And we got to understand that when God gives us instructions, he does not leave us down here on this world because he wants us to try to figure out how to put things together on our own. In other words, I am trying to tell each one of you this morning that God's word is important. Somebody say God's word is important. God's word is important. Uh -huh. Listen, if you get on the airplane and the, and the pilot shuts the door so you won't disturb him, you know why he shuts the door? Because your flight is important. When you go to the doctor's office, he shuts you out of the room for surgery, you know why he shuts the door? Because your health is important. 
and the preacher, the church, we need some folk up in here that don't mind shutting out distraction, that don't mind shutting out the devil doing his delivery. Why? Because your spiritual life is important. Are y'all going to help me here? That's why I tell folk that when the word of God is being preached, you don't need to be on your phone. You don't need to be playing tic-tac-toe. Are y'all going to help me here? You don't need to be hanging around on the outside. You don't need to be worried about Facebook. You don't need to be worried about Snapchat. Why? Because the man of God is being used by God to give you a word from heaven because God is trying to give you some instruction. Instruction. You see... God's word gives you instruction because when you got to bow down here, the word said, lift up your head, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. That's why when the devil tells you maybe your situation is hoping, the word says, hope thou in God. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. I cannot trust the sweetest flame, but wholly lean upon his name. The solid rock I stand all over the ground is shaking sand. God's word is important to me. Why? Because God's word give me instructions while I'm down here on this earth. Instructions. Instructions. Simply mean God has a prescription for every one of my problems. God has a solution for every one of my situations. God has relief every time I feel rejected. God has an ultimatum for everything in my life that's undesirable. And all I'm saying is you can make it. It might get rough down here, but you can make it. Come on and help me. You can make it. You can make it. Why? Because we will be filled by the Holy Spirit. We'll be sealed by the Spirit of God. We'll be illuminated by the Spirit of God. We are comforted by the Spirit of God. And we are protected by the Spirit of God. Now let me just pause for and think, and I'm almost through with this little talk. Sometimes, the instructions don't make sense. Mm-hmm. That's right. Amen, Mabel. I say that myself. Sometimes they don't make sense. Can I help you? Sometimes the instructions tell you to love your enemy. Preach, Pastor. That, that, don't, that don't make sense. Sometimes the instructions say, do good to folk that dog you out. Y'all know that don't make sense. <laughs> Y'all ain't got to say amen. I'll say amen for you. Some, sometimes the instructions tell me I got to pray for folks that I know are trying to persecute me. Oh, I have mercy. You know that don't make sense. Some, sometimes the instructions tell me that, that, that when they slap me on this cheek, I got to turn and off the other. You know that don't make sense. Huh? Sometimes the instructor tell me I got to give even though I may not have it. Come on and help me here. Sometimes the instruction may not make sense, but if you're going to be what God wants you to be, if you're going to have what God wants you to have, if you're going to attain what God wants you to attain, you better learn how to follow the instruction. Because sometimes in life, God is trying to teach you a lesson, and he teaches a lesson by examples and by instructions. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Y'all hear me here? Yes. So when you feel like doing what you ought not do, just keep on following the instructions. Because sometimes in life, what do you a bad hand. Anybody here ever been dealt a bad hand? Yes, I'm the only one. Yes, but God will still give you instructions. Because sometime in life, my heart had been filled with fear. But the instructions tell me that I'm not to fear not. Sometime in life, my eyes become wet with tears. But the instruction says to weep not. Sometimes my eyes are heavy and sometimes I cry all night long. But the instruction says that weeping may endure for a night. 
But if I hold on, joy is coming in the morning. And all I'm trying to say today is that there is no substitute for the word of God. In other words, there's power in his word. There's salvation in his word. There's mercy in his word. There's something his word can give you that the world is not able to give. In other words, he'll give you comfort in the midst of confusion. He'll give you joy in the time of your trouble. He'll give you hope when it seems like it's hopeless. He'll give you peace in the middle of your problems. I'm trying to tell you that sometimes God is trying to teach you a lesson. You just got to learn how to sit there and sit down and trust in his word. Because I found myself sometime in situation where all I had was the word of God. But I thank God that I learned in my few years of living that God's word is everything that Pastor Mabry needs. I'm close with him now, but somebody said, Pastor, you really don't understand what I'm going through right now. Well, when you feel like doing what you ought not do, the Bible says that thou shalt not. When I talked to the Lord, I said, tell me now, Lord, what do you mean when your word said that I shall not? And the Lord said that uh, when you find yourself, yeah, going through what you're going through, uh, there are some things uh, that you need to learn not to do. Do you hear what I'm saying? And uh, the Lord said that uh, you got to learn uh, what Isaiah said, uh, to stay right there uh, and wait on the Lord. Because uh, Isaiah said that uh, if I wait on the Lord, uh, that he will uh, renew my strength. Uh, can I get a witness in here? Isaiah said that uh, he'll give me strength. Uh, that I mount up uh, like weeds on the needle. Uh, Isaiah said that uh, I'll be able to run and, uh, and I won't get tired. Uh, so every day of my life, uh, I tell the Lord, uh, teach me, Lord, uh, how to wait on you. Uh, can I get a witness out there? Well, somebody said, uh, that sound real good. Uh, that sound real touchy. Uh, but you don't understand everything uh, that I'm going through. Uh, well, I'm reminded of y'all uh, of a story I heard. Uh, there was a story uh, that a mama was trying uh, to give some instruction. Uh, do you hear what I'm saying? Uh, I said, I heard a story, y'all, uh, of a mother. Uh, they were trying uh, to give instruction. Uh, she told a seven-year-old son, uh, I want you to learn uh, the 23rd Psalm. Uh, you know the 23rd Psalm. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd. Uh, I shall not want. Uh, she told the little boy, I want you to keep on working uh, until you learn uh, the 23rd Psalm. Uh, the problem used to come. I want you to stand and give your speech. And your speech is going to be the 23rd Psalm. Do you hear what I'm saying? Easter Sunday rolled around. The mother found, she found the MC. She signed the son up. She said, he's going to recite the 23rd Psalm. Do you hear what I'm saying? She took him in the bag uh, and said, come on, let's practice. Uh, we're going to practice uh, on the 23rd song. Uh, the little boy stood there. And, uh, he looked at his mother. Uh, he said, the Lord is uh, my shepherd. Uh, he stood right there. And, uh, he said, uh, the Lord is uh, my shepherd. Uh, he stood right there. And, uh, he no further. He just kept saying that the Lord is 
my shepherd. You hear what I'm saying? They put him outside. He stood in front of the people. He just kept saying that the Lord is my shepherd. The mother looked at him, had a look on her face. He said, what's wrong with you? He said, the Lord is my shepherd. And that's the only thing I know. I said that the Savior, you may not know that he makes you lie down in green pasture. You may not know that he will help you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. But there's one thing that you need to know. And that is that the Lord is my shepherd. And because he's my shepherd, I shall not alone. I got to close him down. But I thank God for my lessons in my life. I thank God for the years in my life. I thank God for the problems in my life. Because if I never had a problem in my life, I would not know that God is able to work that problem out. I thank God for the rain in my life. Because if I never had rain in my life, I would not know how to appreciate the sun. I thank God for the haters in my life. Because if I never had a hater in my life, I would not know who my true friends are. If there ain't anybody here that thank God for your lesson. Because now you can say that my lesson was nothing but a blessing. Y'all miss your shout right there. I said now I can say that my lesson was nothing but a blessing. And now I got a testimony. And my testimony is out of everything that maybe been through. I got a testimony that God has taught me a valuable lesson. He taught me how to hang on just a little while longer. He taught me that we can remain in good for a night. But if I hang on in there, if I hang on in there, the joy will come in the morning. He taught me all that no weapon that's formed against me shall be able to prosper. He taught me all that he will take care of his own. If there anybody here that thank God for your lesson, you ought to tell the Lord, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you because it did not kill me. It did not take me out. It may have slowed me down, but I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm still here. Out of all the pain that I've been through, I'm still here. Out of everything that came my way, I'm still here. Out of everything. That was good on me. You always, you always, you always made a way for me. When God teaches you a lesson, He teaches you by example and He teaches you by instruction. The question is, will you learn the lesson that God is trying to teach you? Paul, I, I, I wish you could read that whole chapter when you get home. Paul said, these things happen to me as examples. And now they have been written down by instruction. There are some things in life we go through we don't have to go through if we will only just read and follow the instruction. And we got to understand 
that instructions are put in place to help you, not to hurt you. But when you violate the instructions, that's when it hurts you. When God teaches you a lesson, I would rather for God to give me an example than to make me an example. Y'all missed that. I would rather for God to give me an example than to make me an example. Sometimes you say, okay, I'm going to have to make an example out of you. I'm going to have to make a believer out of you. No, Lord, you don't have to. I see, I see what you did. <laughs> I see what you did to them. I, I'm, I, I'm going to follow your instruction. All I'm saying is, we can be so much better. We can avoid so many things if we just let God teach us a lesson. Life is a classroom. God is a great teacher. He's given us examples. He's given us examples. But sometimes God has to do like the military used to do us in boot camp, they just give you some hands-on experience. <laughs> Something God just had to let you get your hands on the seat. Because you ain't gonna be you ain't gonna be satisfied until you do it. My prayer for us is that we look at the examples that God has given us and we start following his instructions. Follow his instructions. Follow his instructions. Let us stand. I want us to continue to pray, man, for our community. Pray for, especially these bereaved families. These bereaved families. COVID is still real. We may not see a number update every day. It's still real. People are still dying from it. But people are still dying from other things. Amen. Amen. I went back to my home church. Y'all know that. And, and since being back in less than a month, I did my fourth funeral on yesterday. My fourth funeral yesterday. People are still dying and not just from COVID. People are still leaving here. And so it would behoove us to make sure that we are following the instructions that God has given us. James said that life is like a vapor. Then it vanishes. You're gone. That's why I made up my mind that I'm going to, listen, God, you, you can just give me an example. You ain't got to make no example out of me. I done been, you don't use me enough for the example. So now you just give them to me because I'm going to follow your instruction. And that's my prayer for you. That's my prayer for you. Follow instruction. Sometimes the instruction don't make sense. It don't. Because when you do something to me, my, my, my natural instinct, I want to get you back. Young folk, when somebody flame on you, I be knowing the words, I be in the school all the time. <laughs> you want to flame back on them. They, these young folk, y'all may not, they know what I'm talking about. You want to get them back. But, the Bible said we can't do that. The instructions say we can and I know it don't make sense. Because you got all these people in the corner that they, you know they talking about, man, I ain't no way I let them do that to me. Ain't no way I let them do that to me. Ain't no way, ain't no way. But that ain't what the instructions say. The instructions say turn the other cheek. The instructions say don't do unto them as they have done unto you. 
grown folk. I know. But Lord, I, I just, you know, Lord, I, I don't know. I, I got to pray about this. Because I even said that, man, I got to go, I got to pray about this right here. Because I, you know, you know me, I want to get the last word in. And I know how to get people told. But it ain't what the instruction tell me to do. So let's start following the instructions and being an example. So God will have to make an example out of us. Let us pray. Lord, we come today. We thank you for this day. We thank you for life, health. God, we thank you for strength. We thank you for this opportunity that you gave us to come together in this service. Now, God, it is an opportunity that we do not take lightly. We thank you for your word that gave us an example. We thank you for your word that continues to give us instruction. And now, God, we depart from this place, but never from your presence. We ask you to keep us in your care. I pray now, God, for each individual that's in this house. I pray, God, that you grant them the thing that they stand in need of. God, I pray that you help us develop a closer relationship with you. God, so that we can have a closer walk with you. I pray, God, now for their faith. I pray for their families. I pray blessings upon their finances. God, help us to become the Christian, God, that you have designed us to be. And God, I pray a special prayer for the sick, the shut in. I pray for that one that say, when you pray, pray for me. And God, just bless this community, bless the bereaved families, bless every church on this corner, in this neighborhood that's open, God, that's preaching your word. We ask all of this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. God bless you and God keep you is my prayer. I love y'all, I love you. And ain't nothing y'all can do back. Do I need to call y'all out on the mic? Do I need to call y'all out on the mic? Come on up here, Tevin. I ain't seen you in a while. Come on up here. Come on up here, Angela. I seen you in a while. Come on up there, Angela. Uh -huh. Come on up here.